Good morning. And what an incredible start to the day. Sorry, I'm in shade at the moment, but I wanted to show you guys this sky. How incredible is this? see now that the sun is just starting to rise so I thought what I'll do I would just wait for that sun just to creep above the horizon and then light up some of the foreground here um, and, I, and if I think that I can kind of blend that together with the with the uh, the sunrise this morning that might make for a, a really nice shot so I'm going to leave the camera alone for the next kind of 10-15 minutes before I change orientation. Well that amazing sunrise is now over and I'm just waiting for the next phase of photography to begin. But for what I have in mind at the moment, the conditions are just not right. Now the sun is up, but it's currently sitting in a pocket of clear skies and I'm facing pretty much towards the sun. So the dynamic range here is so great. And for landscape photography, that's fine because I can control that with, with bracketing. But what I've got in mind today, the light is just too harsh. But shortly, the, the sun will move up into a band of cloud. Um, and I'm hoping that will actually make the idea that I've got in my mind a lot easier. So, about another 10 minutes and I, I should be back with you. Unfortunately, as soon as I tried to explain what I was trying to achieve, the camera's autofocus decided to have a hissy fit. The point of this morning's shoot was to try and keep the camera focused on one landscape composition and try to see if I could incorporate my wildlife photography into my landscape photography. In terms of a landscape shot, I like this composition. And so with ever-changing light, and flashes of wildlife, I thought I would be able to take multiple images by sticking to just one composition. Well, in the last 15 minutes, a lot has happened, um, and I've not managed to, to, to photograph or, or film a great deal because it was just going on like quite quickly. And, but I think I've just photographed a marsh harrier. Um, as I said, I, I, I've framed up purely for like landscape with something to, to, to fly into the frame. And I've gone with my standard landscape settings, which is F11. Uh, and I'm focused pretty much to infinity on that tree in the background because I thought if anything flies by, I don't want the lens to kind of start hunting. So um, it may not be uh, really sharp on the bird, but that's okay, because as I say, the bird was just meant to add something to the, the actual landscape image itself. And 
I saw a bird in the distance. Well, I didn't know what it was because it was quite far away and I was assuming it was going to fly across the scene. But it didn't, it banked and it started to come towards me and then banked out again. And when I zoomed in and I could see the, the shape of, of the wings and I could see the beak, I knew it was obviously a, a raptor. Uh, and I'm only guessing to think that it is a marsh harrier. Well, as you can see, if I kind of move my big old fat melon head out the way, you don't know how much willpower I've got at the moment. There is a barn owl and it's been flying around. He's coming my way. No, he's not. He might come round. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Oh, this barn owl has just been flying around the field and I keep thinking, oh, change composition, quick kind of put on the long lens. Uh, and I've really resisted the temptation. Um, but where I am at the moment, I kind of really want to stick with this. And, and even though the sun is incredibly bright now and there'll be no definition in the birds as they fly by, I'm just hoping that like, a nice silhouette will add something to this image. But if that barn owl comes close, <laughs> I may just abandon the video, abandon this shoot, stick on the long lens. Oh, I am a sucker for a barn owl. I've changed my composition ever so slightly. Um, and I do think for landscape photography, this is a far better composition. Um, all I've done really is focused in a lot more on the two trees and there's a, a few posts in the foreground. Um, and the sun has moved round to the, to the right now and it's behind a, a cloud. So the scene is extremely easy to control. But there is some light grasses in this image and then there's some, the two main trees are almost like mid-tones with darker shadows in the back and the sky is looking really nice. So I do think with some gentle kind of dodging and burning, I can actually make this image look fairly colourful. The thing is at the moment, by going in a lot tighter, it's obviously restricting my field of view for any wildlife to actually fly through. But having said that, everything that was coming through here was flying over the two trees in the back. And sometimes they were so small that if I wasn't trying to incorporate wildlife into my image, I would just think, well, I'll clone them out because they're not adding anything. So that's another reason why I thought, right, well, I'll just go in a little bit tighter now um, roll the dice, take a gamble, but I do feel that if anything, if anything flies across now, it will kind of add something to this image. This has been a really interesting morning uh, and more than interesting it's been thoroughly enjoyable. I'm really pleased I stuck with my plan today um, and, and focused purely on that grouping of trees over there and try to incorporate some, incorporate some wildlife into my landscape photos. Now I've kept some constants um, because the, as I said, and you've seen, the dynamic range throughout this morning was incredibly great at times. So I've tried to stick with a shutter speed of one over 1,000. 
ideally I would like to have gone quicker than that because sometimes obviously the birds moving through the frame was incredibly fast. I've stuck on F11 that way I've just focused in the distance and everything that's going to be flying into the shot should be reasonably sharp and there is a huge heron coming straight towards me. So yeah so I was I focused on the on the trees on, on F11 and everything that was moving through should be kind of reasonably sharp. The only thing this morning that I've really had to alter quite a lot was the ISO and as I said I think I may have mentioned this before I've shot between anything between ISO 640 up to 5000. So I don't quite know what them images are going to come out like but we'll soon see when I get back to post. Anyway I'm going to end this video now and I'm going to say thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed coming with me this morning. If you have then please consider subscribing tapping the small notification bell and giving this video a like but until my next video be kind and stay safe